the best careers for extroverts. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we get into that, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, careers, degrees, and different opportunities that are going to lead you to success. We also go over some of the common traps that people fall for and how you can avoid them. If that sounds like something that interests you and you haven't done it already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell in order to see more content like this. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. Number 10 on the list is one that I've talked about before. It's going to be a lawyer. This is going to be someone who practices or studies law as a lawyer or a counselor. And I can already see the comments now. Clown, Shane, you clown. You said this degree was overrated and now you're putting it as one of the top 10 degrees on another video. You clown, why are you lying? Just because I think this is a career that's overrated, meaning in my opinion, the perception of the career is so far different than what the actual reality of what people and lawyers have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what I mean by overrated. This doesn't mean that for the right person, this can't be a decent career that can work for you. And a true subscriber, a true member of Team Hummus, knows that I only post the bestest and the most correctest information possible. Anyways, BLS says lawyers make around $122,000 a year. There's 813,000 jobs out there and it's growing at 4%, which is as fast as average. Now, I did just make a video talking about how getting a law degree and becoming a lawyer is one of the most overrated careers. Pop culture glorifies being a lawyer. Um, there's a lot of different shows out there that make it seem like it's one of the best careers ever. And it did used to be a really good career. Now, just because I think it's overrated doesn't mean that it can't be a good career for the right person. You can check Check out my video for more information on that but basically someone who's extroverted they're an a-type personality they're willing to work 80 plus hours a week and basically never have any time off even when they're on vacation they're still going to be having to do work if their boss calls them up in the middle of vacation literally in the middle of a bar in Las Vegas like happened to uh, one of my friend's cousins they still have to get that work done it's one of those careers that's high risk and it's also a very high reward many people who get law degrees either end up never becoming a lawyer at all or they work as a lawyer for a very short period of time and then they decide that they don't want to have anything to do with it. Others join big firms, start at the bottom, work their way up, and eventually make it to the point where they're making over $5 million a year. This is what I found when I did my research for the video Careers That Create the Most Millionaires. Lawyers showed up as the number four most common career in the top 10% of earners as well as the top 1%. So as long as you make sure you know exactly what you're getting yourself into and you're the right type of personality, and you do your research, this can be a really good career. Number nine on the list is going to be salesperson. All right, so I've got a pretty strong opinion about sales jobs, okay? I really like them. They are awesome. Everybody should get a sales job at least once in their life. Even if you're the most introverted person ever, even if you end up hating the job, you will learn so much from a sales job. Now, a salesperson is obviously someone who sells goods and services. A common example of one would be someone who sells cars. So an example of a job you could get is a financial service sales agent, and they make around $62,000 a year. There is 464,000 jobs available, and it's growing at about 4%, which is average. Now, as you can see, this isn't like an insane salary or anything like that. And to be honest with you, the salaries are going to vary quite a bit. Shane, I watched this channel to learn how to secure the bag, bro. Why are you showing me this low tier trash? How much you make is going to depend on so many different factors. Your experience level, your skill level, what type of salesman you are, what company you work for, what industry you're working in. Now, if you went out there and you asked all the different billionaires and multimillionaires what job they all had in common in their past, they contributed to them getting to the point where they are right now, they would say a sales job. And the reason I know that is because they actually have done this. But hey, not everybody wants to become a billionaire. Most of us wanna have a nice lifestyle, but we don't wanna have to deal with all the stuff that comes along with being like a high net worth individual. Most of us just wanna live a nice lifestyle, have a nice house, enjoy a job, buy a nice car, you know, you got the white picket fence, you go on vacation a few times a year, you just wanna live that American dream. But I'm telling you, this job will make you come out of your shell, even if you're an introvert like me, it'll teach you so many different lessons. It will help you no matter what career you end up going into. Now, if you did wanna be like a pro salesman, you like, you want to be a salesman for life, 
what I highly recommend you do is make sure to go into an industry where the commissions are higher. So make sure to go into an industry where there's a lot of opportunity for salesmen. Now you gotta do your research on this, but some of the obvious ones are gonna be like finance industry, selling things like insurance, for instance. You could also go into a technology industry sales job where some of the salespeople are making upwards of $5 million a year. By the way, I'm not saying that introverts can't do this one. It's just one of those jobs I've noticed where the people who do the best tend to be extroverts. That's just my opinion, okay? That's just my opinion. Number eight on the list is going to be a physician. This is going to be a medical doctor. They're gonna practice medicine at the highest level. Now, BLS shows physicians making over $208,000 a year. It's actually quite a bit higher than that. It really depends on what specialty you go into. Orthopedics, for instance, makes over $500,000 a year. So this number is definitely on the lower side. Now, there's a bunch of different types of doctors. You can't really lump all of them in together. But in my opinion, because of the fact that you're constantly gonna be seeing new people, you're going to be meeting patients you've never met before. You're going to be communicating with all different types of healthcare professionals from nurses, pharmacists, etc. In my opinion, it's a good idea if you are a little bit extroverted. You have to be able to communicate at an extremely high level. Hello, sick people and their loved ones. And the reason for this is because you're gonna be communicating on different levels depending on who you're talking to. So if you're talking to a patient, and this is just a very, very basic example, if you're talking to a patient, you're telling them the issue that they have with their stomach, you might say, oh, you have heartburn. Whereas if you're talking to another medical profession, you might say, oh, you've got GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. If you're talking uh, to a patient about research, you would say that something is statistically significant. Whereas if you're talking to another doctor or a pharmacist, you might mention that the p-value is less than 0.05. And you also might talk about whether the study has enough power. If you say these types of things to patients, they're gonna look at you like you're speaking a foreign language. These are oversimplified examples, but I think you get the idea here. You're constantly gonna have to be talking to tons of different types of people. All of them are gonna have different skill levels. They've all got different jobs and you are gonna have to communicate in completely different ways with all of them. You're gonna be meeting new people all the time. You're gonna be around big groups all the time. This is one of those things that with most of the doctor professionals, sessions it would help a little bit if you're extroverted. Now as a doctor, you're also pretty much by default kind of a manager. You're basically a leader because of the fact that all of the other healthcare professions kind of look up to you. And this is whether you want to be a leader or not. It's not really a choice. When you become a medical doctor, you're basically a leader by default. And many of the best doctors I know are A-type personalities that are extremely extroverted. They're okay working really hard, working around the clock and being around other people all the time. There are some specialties you could make a good argument that it's better to be introverted in and these would include you know maybe radiology or psychiatry something along those lines but a lot of them it's going to be better if you're an extrovert doesn't mean you can't do it if you're an introvert okay I'm not going to tell you that but just overall that's my opinion number seven on the list is going to be financial advisor now this is going to be a person who is employed to provide financial services and advice to individual people. So you're gonna be talking to just normal everyday people that are looking into retirement or investing or things like that. Now, personal financial advisors make around $87,000 a year. There's 263,000 jobs available and it's growing at 4%, which is as fast as average. So you're gonna be talking to just everyday average people, giving them investment advice and other types of financial advice. Anything from investing, uh, budgeting, retiring, uh, paying for a house, paying for their kids' college, all sorts of different things like that. You're gonna be constantly communicating with clients and it's important that you talk with them and gain their trust. This is definitely one of those professions where being able to talk to people and maintaining relationships is gonna be key to your success. And this is something that obviously would benefit you if you're extroverted and you get your energy by being around other people all the time. Number six on the list is going to be dental hygienist. This is basically the person who is under supervision of a dentist and they help the dentist out by providing certain services that basically an assistant couldn't provide, but someone who is a little bit more trained than that can actually help them out with. Dental hygienists make around $76,000 a year. It only requires an associate's degree, so not too bad in terms of education. 226,000 jobs available, and it's growing at 6%, which is faster than average. So think about the experience. You go to the dentist, someone's putting their hands inside of your mouth. They're all up close to you and stuff. Pretty uncomfortable for most people, obviously. This is why dentists, out of all different types of doctors, usually have some of the best bedside manner. And the people they work work with generally are the same way. They want to make the process of going to the dentist, getting their teeth cleaned, you know, getting all that sort of thing done as painless as possible. 
That's a lot of gas. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat it here. I'm just gonna say this as plainly as I possibly can. Most of the successful dental hygienists are going to be very outgoing, extroverted people. Number five on the list is going to be a manager. Now managers are gonna be people who are kind of in charge of controlling or administering a part of a company. So there's a ton of different examples out there. I'll give you a couple of them. Construction managers, 95,000 a year, 476,000 jobs available, growing at 8%, which is much faster than average. Computer and information Information Systems Manager, $146,000 a year, 461,000 jobs, growing at 10%, which is really good. So everyone knows that managers make really good money. They make a lot more than their non-manager counterparts. Software developers, for instance, make around $107,000 a year, and their manager counterparts are going to be making over $145,000. And you basically see this disparity pretty much everywhere. Businesses value people who have leadership and management skills. It's just that simple. Now, as a manager, you're gonna to need to communicate with your staff all the time. You're gonna to need to form relationships with them. You're gonna to try to foster a positive culture, hopefully. You're gonna be communicating with people all the time. A lot of the time, as a manager, you're gonna get calls after work. You know, you go home, you think you're done with work. Nope, somebody's gonna be calling you up. That sort of thing honestly drives me nuts. I hate taking my work home with me. I like to do work when I'm at work and just relax, do whatever I want when I'm at home. But I'm an introvert. This is a list about extroverts. A lot of the time, extroverts love it when people call them up or when people text them. So this is another position where, again, you can be good as an introvert, but a lot of the time it's going to help you if you are extroverted. Number four on the list is going to be a nurse. And nurses, I think everybody knows what that is. They care for people who are sick. Registered nurses are gonna make around $73,000 a year, three million jobs available, and it's growing at 7%, which is faster than average. Another career where you're just gonna be around people all the time. You're constantly gonna be talking to patients as well as talking to doctors and other healthcare professionals. Nurses always have way too much to do. They're basically like the backbone of healthcare. And you have to be able to communicate and talk with people effectively while you're rushing around trying to get stuff done. Now on top of that, nursing is one of those careers where there's tons of jobs out there. There's 3 million uh, registered nurse jobs out there alone. And so it pretty much doesn't matter what personality type you are, nursing is going to be good for just about any person out there. And the reason for that is because, hey, you get a job as a nurse in this one specialty, you don't like it, well, guess what? There's like a 100 other specialties that you can try to get a job in as well. Some of them are gonna involve more or less patient interaction. So this is a really good career for extroverts, and in general, it's just a good career for just about anybody to get into. Number three on the list is going to be an executive. This is going to be a person with senior uh, managerial responsibility and power within a business, and they're going to be responsible for creating this plans basically and putting them into effect. Now, BLS has top executives making around $104,000 a year. There's 2.7 million jobs available, so a lot of them, and they're growing at about 4%. Now, depending on the company structure, generally speaking, executives are gonna be a little bit higher than managers. You could almost say that they're the manager of the managers. So executives are gonna oversee the implementation of plans that the company put out in order to make sure that they are meeting their deadlines and their goals. Now, a manager will oftentimes play the role of a motivator or a mentor to individuals within the company. Executives will often play a role of motivator or mentor to the managers. Now, there's a ton of different executive positions. It could range all the way from CEO, which is the head of the company, CFO. It could be a vice president or a president. Now, a lot of these positions will have to interact with people all the time, and so it's going to give them an advantage if they are an extrovert. Number two on the list is going to be real estate agents. This is a person who sells and rents out building and land for clients. Now, real estate brokers and agents make around $50,000 a year. There's 477,000 jobs available and the growth is a little bit slow at about 2%. Now, one thing you'll notice when you look here is you don't have to get a college degree or anything like that. In fact, most real estate agents just have a high school diploma or the equivalent. It doesn't take long to become a real estate agent. You gotta take a test, you gotta get certified and then you're basically good to go. Now, careerbliss.com, Basically, they rank a bunch of different careers in terms of job satisfaction. I think they're one of the better websites that I look at when I'm looking at different uh, methodologies and stuff like that to figure out which jobs have high job satisfaction. Career Bliss a few years ago ranked real estate agents as the happiest job in the United States. They had it at 4.26 out of 5 in terms of its total ranking. Now, technically speaking, a lot of real estate agents are salesmen, but it's more of a chill, long-term type of sales. It's not like a 
you know, pushy, you know, get people to buy sort of thing. It's more of a form of relationship with them, get to know them, figure out what they need, and then help them out in the process of selecting a house. A lot of successful real estate agents are just people that are very well connected in their community. And then whenever someone decides to buy a house, they're like, oh yeah, John that I go to church with, he's a real estate agent, I guess I'll go and call him. A lot of the job is just hanging out with people, going to different events and being well known within your community. Now, a lot of people choose a more laid back approach like that. And then some of them get a little bit more aggressive and they do things like door knocking. And that's basically where you spend all day just going to random houses, knocking on people's doors and asking them if they're interested in either selling their house or buying a house. Again, a lot of these methods would likely give a slight advantage to extroverts just because of the fact that you're gonna be around people all the time, you're probably gonna be meeting new people all the time, and so that's something that an extrovert would be a little bit better at just because of the fact that they get energized from that. Number one on the list is going to be entrepreneur. And this is a person who organizes and operates a business, generally taking on a significant amount of risk in order to do so. So obviously the amount that you make can vary a lot here. There's entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos that make billions and billions of dollars a year. Now, according to data from BLS, approximately 20% of new businesses fail during the first two years of being open, 45% during the first five years, 65% during the first 10 years, and only 25% of new businesses make it to 15 years or more. Now, these numbers are generally for small businesses, so things like you know, opening up a barber shop or something along those lines. Those types of businesses don't have as much of an upside. You're probably not gonna make any more than maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars a year at best with a barber shop. And so they have a much better chance of success. Whereas if you get into something like a startup, for instance, like starting an app or something along those lines, your chances of success will likely be a lot lower. Startups, for instance, have an estimated 90% chance of failure on average. So yeah, you definitely don't have to be an extrovert to be a successful entrepreneur. There are many cases where introverts can be successful as well. A lot of it depends on what industry you're in, uh, who you have in your team, what type of business you're running. But in many cases, it's good if the company has someone who is kind of a charismatic leader type of figure. An extrovert might be better at coming onto Shark Tank, for instance, and pitching their product. They might be better at recruiting and leading people on their team. They might find it a little bit easier to network with other people who they might potentially end up doing business with. Make sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you you have on this video and before you go make sure to always check out my other videos right here because I made them just for you